Hey Team Brantford, welcome back to another edition of the Brantford Sessions. My name is Steve Babcock. I am uh, grateful to be uh, back with my guest, Rochelle Romney, where we are uh, exploring what we can do as individuals to uh, reduce our carbon footprint. I consider myself to be relatively informed and quite passionate when it comes to the environment. Uh, I, I will admit that most of my information probably comes from my teenage daughters, uh, but I know I can always learn more. So let's see what Rochelle has to say. What's the biggest thing we can do right now that will actually have an impact? I think figuring out your our own carbon footprint is just like having that in like having that knowledge first of all to know how you impact and like where your major uh, sources of emissions are coming from. And like even when I did this activity like not that long ago, um, it was eye opening for me to know like oh every time I fly to Europe like that's you know equivalent to like driving to work every day, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. um, and just being aware of how how that you know where those emissions are coming from. And then you can sort of pinpoint actions to take. Um, and the other one is eating less beef. <laughs> yeah, so that is, um, I had this uh, deep fear that that's what you were going to say. Because <laughs> that, that is one of those, that is one of those sacrifices that it, that's a tough one for me. Like I, I haven't gone through the exercise that you have. I'd be interested to go through it because I'm sure there'd be a lot of interesting learnings and uh, behaviors that come, the like behavior change that comes out of that. Um, and I, I try to do my part. Like I'm, I'm pretty serious about recycling and like I spend time organizing my kids just, you know, dump stuff in the recycling bin and I go through and organize it, make sure that, you know, it's clean and, you know, it's the right stuff. And I drive EV cars. I, I, do, I do all of that stuff, but it's, that um, it's the stuff the, the stuff around vegetarian like getting rid of getting rid of the the beef thing that uh, I was really surprised when I did a little bit of research on that and I was like oh man is that the next step for me because I don't want to do that but it is a big deal isn't it <laughs> I, beef is a big deal but I, and I don't even think it's a matter of eliminating beef I think like when you look at the data like the demand for beef globally is increasing all the time. And so I think it's just like keeping that in mind and like, you know, instead of eating beef every day, you know, maybe eat beef half the time and like, and, and eat other meat. Like, you know, it's not even about being vegan or being vegetarian. It's just, you know, being aware of how you're like the things that you buy and eat, like have a carbon cost as well. So you know, I'm a big proponent of just like having more information and then you can do what you want with that. But um, I think that that's a, that's an easy one, I think to do is, you know, like have a, have chicken maybe a couple of nights a week instead of beef. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, how did you, what's the exercise you went through to, to identify that carbon footprint? Like what's the, as an individual, what's the resource that I would go to, to, to learn more about how to do that? Um, so I actually have a link on, so there's a climate action webpage that's part of the city website, which has a bunch of resources that I've sort of gathered together. So there is a link to a suggested uh, carbon calculator on there. Um, I think the one I suggested is carbon zero. And so you can go in there and type in your, you know, you have to go get some of your utility bills because a lot of it is how much electricity you use in your home and how much natural gas you use. And like, you know, did you take a flight and you can, there's a calculator on there that tells you the emissions associated with flights and driving. So um, yeah, there's a link through that webpage that I'd okay. recommend. I will try to find a way to um, embed a link in this video somehow. Oh, I'm, sure I can, I'm sure I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what were the big, uh, did, did you have behavior changes? You're obviously passionate about this. Were there behavior changes that you implemented as, as a result of going through that exercise? I've learned so much of just about how, um, yeah, all my actions impact this larger like carbon footprint. Um, so I've been able to make some changes. So we're lucky enough that we were able to, you know, get an electric car. So that was a big change. Um, and then even with working from home and like the sort of permanent working from home model, we were able to, to we had two gas powered vehicles and now we have one electric vehicle. So that was a big change that we were able to make. Um, and I've also tried to, to eliminate beef from my diet, uh, but you know certainly we, we eat enough other meat, so we're yeah. able to, to make that swap. But um, yeah, so we were able to to do that at home, and yeah, just you know being a little bit more aware of of how our 
actions try to, or lead to carbon emissions. It's, it's a learning process for sure. It does seem that the key to this is really around awareness and education. The more, the more uh, awareness you can, uh, and you can have as ammunition, the easier it is to make these decisions and, and see true behavioral change. Is that fair to say? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's, that's the important piece is just, I guess, you know, knowing, but then also caring is like the next step, right? Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, without that first piece of knowing how your actions cause, cause uh, an impact, then you have no ability to, to change or, you know, there's no reason for you to care, I guess, unless you know. We all have those friends um, that, that are perhaps haven't bought into the system that uh, call climate change a hoax what, how do you how do you approach that? What's your messaging to those to those folks that uh, perhaps aren't far far along in the journey yet? Yeah, that's a, that's a challenging, and um, I do notice that the conversation is changing quickly. Like even you know from when I started two years ago to today, like there's a there's a lot more awareness and acceptance. I guess that climate change is happening and we need to deal with it. Um, but I also learned this lesson you know, back when I was doing a uh, wind farm uh, public consultation. And there was a lot, lot of people 10 years ago that were very adamant that climate change wasn't happening and that, you know, wind energy was terrible for everybody. Um, right. And so you sort of learn through that process that there's people that are genuinely interested in learning more. Um, and then there are people that have already made up their mind and there's no convincing them. And to just not necessarily, don't, it's not a great strategy to, to waste your energy trying to convince them because um, you can be spending your effort better elsewhere. Um, but, you know, I think certainly I always try to provide the information that uh, I think will be most relevant to them. And, and then if it's, if it's a lost cause, you have to recognize that and, and go do something else. <laughs> uh, that's really, I, I love that perspective. And so this is a bit off the, off the wall thinking, but I, I know that um, I do a lot of project management work and continuous improvement work. And I always like to, when I'm building a team in order to, for me to form a strong team, I need to have a lot of, as much diversity as possible. I need to have a, a different range of perspectives and opinions to make sure that we've got people that are asking those, you know, those why questions and really pushing the limits and, and making sure that the uh, ideas and suggestions are, are really well thought out. And so I always, I always love to have someone on the team that perhaps is a change resistor that isn't really a bought into, um, you know, this way of thinking that isn't really looking for continuous improvement or change. There, in in some cases, you can get a. It's a really interesting perspective, and it's very powerful to have that person on the team because it's it's they provide this entirely different uh, way of thinking. Um, is there any value in? listening to those resistors to the change, uh, to, to climate change? And, and is there any learnings from that that you can take away and perhaps uh, learn from as, as you change your approach to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I, th I think you're right. Like, I think that is still a, a, you know, percentage of the population that, that does feel that way and, um, you know, are, are served well with what's happening now and don't necessarily want anything to change. So, um, I think it's, you know, it's important to listen so that you can understand the underlying uh, concerns and issues and then hopefully work towards addressing those. Um, and I, th I think people often are afraid of change often, right? So um, that's something that, that I think more information and, um, you know, just the right, the right messaging uh, can, can work well. I feel like I do my part when it comes to helping Mother Nature, but I've done some reflection uh, since my conversation with Rochelle, and I now know that I'm not as informed as perhaps I should be. So I did the carbon zero calculation. Uh, it took me about 10 minutes to do. Uh, turns out my family carbon footprint on a normal year is about 14 tons of CO2. Uh, I, but I was surprised to learn that the biggest contributor to our footprint actually comes from our annual vacation trip to the Caribbean. Now, I try to make the most of my vacation time. I turn into a bit of a party animal. You're probably not too surprised to learn that. 
My goal is to drink at least five tons of Jamaican rum over the course of the week. Uh, but I was surprised to learn that I'm also contributing over five tons of CO2 to the ozone layer when I take this vacation as well. So my light bulb moment for this edition is to quite simply get informed. This isn't just applicable to uh, helping our environment, but really applies to life in general. You wanna increase the likelihood of making a good decision, arm yourself with the information that you need in order to make an informed choice. And sometimes that may mean that you may need to talk to someone who doesn't share your viewpoint in order to expand your horizons. Uh, in our next episode of the Brantford Sessions, uh, I'm gonna be uh, speaking with Rochelle again. This is our uh, third discussion in the trilogy uh, where she's gonna be discussing how she uses data to make decisions and to guide her strategy. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.